Hello everyone, I am Mohammed Hamama, and this is your ASCP preparation camp. In this camp, we will proceed with an explanation of all ASCP lectures from its reading list. In today's video, we will discuss iron kinetics and laboratory assessment. None of the metals that are required for metabolic processes are more important than iron. It is critical to energy production in all cells, being at the center of the cytochromes of mitochondria. Oxygen needed for energy production is carried attached to iron by the hemoglobin molecule in red blood cells. Iron is so critical to the body that there is no mechanism for active excretion and even recycle to conserve as much as possible in the body. The largest percentage of body iron, nearly 65% of it, is held within hemoglobin in red blood cells of various stages. While about 25% of body iron is in storage, mostly within macrophages and hepatocytes. 10% is divided among the muscles, the plasma, the cytochromes of cells, and various iron-containing enzymes within cells. It is important to know that iron is distributed in three compartments. 1. The functional compartment, contains all iron that is functioning within cells. Though most of this is the iron in hemoglobin, the iron in myoglobin, and cytochromes. 2. The storage compartment, the iron that is not currently functioning but is available when needed. The major sources of this stored iron are the macrophages and hepatocytes, but every cell, except mature red blood cells, stores some iron. 3. The third compartment is the transport compartment, iron that is in transit from one body site to another in the plasma. To be able to understand iron kinetics you have to know iron chemistry. The metabolic functions of iron depend on its ability to change its valence state from reduced ferrous iron to the oxidized ferric state. Thus it is involved in oxidation and reduction reactions such as the electron transport within mitochondrial cytochromes. In cells, ferrous iron can react with peroxide via the Fenton reaction, forming highly reactive oxygen molecules. The resulting hydroxyl radical, also known as a free radical, is especially reactive as a short-lived but potent oxidizing agent, able to damage proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids. Iron Kinetics Systemic Body Iron Regulation the total amount of iron available to all body cells, systemic body iron, is regulated by absorption into the body because there is no mechanism for excretion. Ferrous iron in the lumen of the small intestine is carried across the luminal side of the enterocyte by divalent metal transporter 1. Once the iron has been absorbed into enterocytes, it requires another transporter, ferroportin, to carry it across the basolaminal enterocyte membrane into the bloodstream. When the body has adequate stores of iron, the hepatocytes sense that and will increase the production of hepcidin, a protein able to bind to ferroportin, leading to its inactivation. As a result, iron absorption into the body decreases. When the body has adequate stores of iron, the hepatocytes sense that and will increase the production of hepcidin. As a result, iron absorption into the body decreases. When the body's iron begins to drop, the liver senses that change and decreases hepcidin production. As a result, ferroportin is once again active and able to transport iron into the blood. Another important point is how iron is transport. Iron exported from the enterocyte into the blood is ferrous and must be converted to the ferric form for transport in the blood. Hefiestin, a protein on the basolaminal enterocyte membrane, is able to oxidize iron as it exits the enterocyte. Once oxidized, the iron is ready for plasma transport, carried by a specific protein, apotransferrin. Once iron binds, the molecule is known as transferrin. Apotransferrin binds two molecules of ferric iron. After you had an idea about iron chemistry and had known how iron is transported you will be able to imagine and understand cellular iron absorption and disposition. Individual cells regulate the amount of iron they absorb to minimize the adverse effects of free radicals. 
This is accomplished by relying on an iron-specific carrier to move it into the cell by a process called receptor-mediated endocytosis. Cell membranes possess a receptor for transferrin, transferrin receptor 1. At the pH of the plasma, transferrin receptor 1 has the highest affinity for deferic transferrin, once deferic transferrin bind transferrin, transferrin receptor 1, the membrane begins to invaginate. Until the invagination pinches off a vesicle inside the cytoplasm called an endosome. Hydrogen ions are pumped into the vesicle to lower the pH. That decreases the affinity of transferrin for iron, so the iron releases. At that pH affinity of transferrin receptor 1 for apotransferrin increases so the apotransferrin remains bound to the receptor. The iron is exported from the vesicle into the cytoplasm of the cell by divalent metal transporter 1. The endosome returns to the cell membrane. Where the endosome membrane fuses with the cell membrane. That decreases the affinity of transferrin for iron, so the iron releases. At the pH of the extracellular fluid, transferrin receptor 1 has a very low affinity for apotransferrin, so it is released into the plasma. Apotransferrin releases into the plasma, available to bind iron once again so as the transferrin receptor 1. Ferric iron is stored in a cage-like protein called apoferritin. Once iron binds, it is known as ferritin. One ferritin molecule can bind more than 4,000 iron ions. Partially degraded ferritin is known as hemosiderin and is less metabolically available than ferritin. Dietary iron, bioavailability, and demand. Iron can be absorbed as either ionic iron or non-ionic iron in the form of heme. Ionic iron must be in the ferrous form for absorption into the enterocyte via the luminal membrane carrier, divalent metal transporter. However, most dietary iron is ferric, especially from plant sources. As a result, it is not readily absorbed. Furthermore, other dietary compounds can bind iron and inhibit its absorption. These include oxalates, phytates, phosphates, and calcium. Release from these binders and reduction to the ferrous form are enhanced by gastric acid, acidic foods, and an enterocyte luminal membrane protein, duodenal cytochrome B. Heme with its bound iron is more readily absorbed than ionic iron. The most bioavailable source of dietary iron meat, with heme in both myoglobin of muscle and hemoglobin of blood. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, activate notifications to get our new videos, if you like our content please press the like button, and share the video with your friends. If you have any questions leave a comment below. Now we have laboratory assessment of body iron status. Body iron status can be determined through laboratory assessments, which include traditional tests such as serum iron, total iron binding capacity, percent transferrin saturation, and Prussian blue staining in ferritin assays as well as newer tests like the soluble transferrin receptor, respiratory hemoglobin content and zinc protoporphyrin may be used. Serum iron. An indicator of available transport iron. The measurement of serum iron can be done using colorimetric methods and various reagents, such as ferrozine. The process involves releasing iron from transferrin through acid and then reacting the freed iron with a reagent to form a colored complex that can be detected using spectrophotometry. Serum iron levels alone have limited usefulness due to high variability within and between days, as well as increases after consuming iron-containing foods and supplements. The standard practice has been to collect serum iron samples early in the morning after fasting to avoid diurnal variation. Total Iron Binding Capacity TIBC is an indirect indicator of iron stores. Total iron binding capacity is a measure of the amount of transferrin, a protein that carries iron in the blood, that is available to bind iron. This is determined by adding excess ferric iron to a blood sample and removing any unbound iron through precipitation with magnesium carbonate powder. Using a basic iron method to release the iron from transferrin. The amount of iron detected represents all the binding sites available on transferrin. 
it is actually an indirect measure of transferrin. As for percent transferrin saturation, it is an indirect indicator of iron stores with the transport iron. Is a measure of how much of the transferrin in the blood is carrying iron. It is calculated by taking the amount of iron bound to transferrin and dividing it by the total amount of binding sites for iron and multiplying the result by 100%. It is important that both SI and TIBC are measured in the same units for the calculation, but it does not matter which units are used. The normal range for this measurement is usually around 33% of transferrin is typically saturated with iron. Prussian blue staining is a visual qualitative assessment of tissue iron stores. Prussian blue is actually a chemical compound with the formula Fe7, CN, 18 that forms during a staining process using acidic potassium ferrocyanide as a reagent. This process allows for the detection of iron in tissue by creating dark blue dots that can be seen under a microscope. The amount of stain present can be used to semi-quantitatively grade or score the tissue. This staining method is considered the gold standard for assessing iron levels in the body and is commonly used when conducting bone marrow or liver biopsies. Although the stain reacts with ferric iron, it does not detect ferritin likely due to the intact protein cage. Hemosiderin is easily detected by the stain. Ferritin the indicator of iron stores. Is an intracellular protein, it is secreted by macrophages into plasma. The level of ferritin in the blood correlates well with stored iron levels as shown by Prussian blue stains of bone marrow. Ferritin is also an acute phase protein, which means that it increases in response to inflammation and infection. This can lead to elevated ferritin levels that do not reflect the actual amount of stored iron in the body, in an attempt to sequester the iron away from the bacteria. A low ferritin level is a more reliable indicator of iron deficiency than an elevated level. Soluble transferrin receptor the amount of transferrin receptor on the membrane of cells is regulated based on the amount of intracellular iron. When iron levels drop, cells express more transferrin receptors on the membrane. A shorter form of the receptor, called soluble transferrin receptor, is released into the plasma and can be measured using an immunoassay. Increases in soluble transferrin receptor levels can indicate either an increase in the amount of transferrin receptor on individual cells, as in cases of iron deficiency anemia. Hemoglobin content of reticulocytes Under normal conditions, the number of circulating reticulocytes represents the status of erythropoiesis in the prior 24-hour period, and the amount of hemoglobin in reticulocytes provides a near real-time assessment of iron available for hemoglobin production. The hemoglobin content of reticulocytes will drop when iron for erythropoiesis is restricted. Zinc protoporphyrin When iron is not incorporated into the heme molecule, zinc binds to protoporphyrin 9 instead, resulting in the accumulation of zinc protoporphyrin in red blood cells. This accumulation can be easily detected through a fluorescence test. While zinc protoporphyrin levels will increase during iron-deficient erythropoiesis, the diagnostic value of this test is greatest when the activity of the enzyme ferrochelatase is impaired, as in the case of lead poisoning. Thank you for completing the video, remember to ask for ASCP short notes, and don't forget to subscribe, bye.